What's up guys, welcome to Do Whiskey, my name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Tometan Legacy. Stick around. All right, so we've got a budget expression with us today. I've got a Tometan here, this is their Legacy, and I believe this is only the second time I've ever reviewed a Tometan on this channel. It's not a brand that I have a lot of experience with. The last one I looked at was the 12 year old and I did not like that one. I came down pretty hard on it. I have also tried their cast strength expression. I've tried the 14, but ages ago, I kind of forget that one. And I have a bottle of their 18 year old on the go. So I have tried a few Tomatins in my day and my overall impression is that it's okay. Uh, it's not an exceptional whiskey, but they can make some good stuff. I guess the biggest issue I have with this brand is that it's not very characterful. Like it's not a character that's immediately like identifiable or even that interesting as far as I'm concerned. But if you give them some clever cask play, a decent ABV, maybe a nice age statement, they can make some pretty decent whiskey. Now this review actually came about because of you guys. This one was a viewer recommendation. And that's because as I said earlier, I looked at the 12 and I just, I did not like that one. I gave it a bad score, something like, I think it was 79. And then a bunch of you chimed in, you said, no, that is not a good ambassador for Tomatin. If you want a nice budget offering from the brand, you should go for the Legacy. And because I know my viewers know their stuff, so when a lot of you offer up the same suggestion, that's when my ears perk up and I'm like, okay, maybe I should check this one out. So here we are. Uh, anyway, this one is a no age stated whiskey. It's been matured in bourbon barrels and virgin oak barrels. It doesn't fare too too well with like online review websites, whiskey based, that kind of thing, but of course it wouldn't. You know, this is a no age stated whiskey. It is not craft presented. It is very much a budget offering. So it's really not built for that crowd. Of course, that's not going to stop me. Enough people have said this is a good one. So let's find out. Let's jump into our review, see what the whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Alrighty, so our ABV here comes in at 43%. It is probably chill filtered. I'm just gonna assume that it is. I couldn't find anything there. It is definitely a colored whiskey, but once again, this is very much a budget offering, so I'm actually not that mad at it. So we do have our fake tan color here, but it's not that overdone, actually. As for the bottle itself, I think Tomatin bottles are solid. I don't find them especially exciting. They don't do that much for me, but they're not bad. Uh, it's very modern, lots of glass showing, very simple label. I can appreciate that, but again, not really my style or my aesthetic. I'll give it three out of five. You know, for a no age stated budget offering, our info here is not that bad. They at least tell us what casks they use. We have some tasting notes here. Nothing about being chill filtered, but on the back, it does say mit Faberstoff, so it's telling us it's colored. Although to be fair, that is a legal requirement in some markets, but we'll give it a pass. Overall, bottle's okay. I didn't add water. Let's try our nose. Bright, clean, fresh. Big vanilla in here. There's big maltiness in here too. It's fruity. I'm getting uh, apples. I'm getting pears. I'm getting lemon. Definitely some ginger. There's a nice icing sugar note in here. It's kind of like, um, like if it's vanilla sponge cake with icing on top. It is sweet, but it's never cloying. Uh, and it's not complex, but it's more complex than I was expecting. I do like the brightness here. Now our palette. All right, light texture. Again, quite malty here. Uh, some spices, so I'm getting white pepper in here. I'm getting ginger, uh, some citrus again, some apple. Definitely some vanilla. This is more of a straight line. I do feel like we've lost some of the layers that we had on the nose. Let's try the finish. Okay. Uh, still, those spices, bit of heat to this. Uh, white pepper, spicy ginger. We're starting to get some more baking spices in here too. Maybe like uh, some nutmeg in here. Uh, I'm getting praline as well. Still fruity, still on that lemon note, uh, apples, apple skins, and even a bit of astringency, but like a fruity, kind of like apple vinegar. It's a short finish. 
So this is not bad. You know, this is one of those whiskeys where we do have to consider the price. We do have to consider that it's entry level and we have to consider that this is meant to be a very unassuming whiskey. And I like it for what it is. Obviously, it's not an epic whiskey. It's not going to blow your mind. And I don't think a lot of people are going to go into this whiskey with those kinds of expectations. And if they do, really, that's on them. Um, at the end of the day, all things considered, this is a pretty decent whiskey. And I think a lot of you might actually enjoy it. For me, the best part about this whiskey is the nose. I think the nose is more interesting, it's more complex, it's more engaging than the whole rest of the experience. Once we get into the palate, into the finish, things become a lot more linear and they do become more simple. But we do have nice flavors in there. Uh, one thing that might put some people off though is there's uh, some heat, there's some astringency in the finish. Yeah, we do have a bit of sharpness in here, but really it's not enough to throw me off. Uh, aside from that, in terms of our flavors here, it's mostly driven by vanillas and gingers and uh, we have some cereals in here, some citrus. There is a nice icing sugar note in here as well that I do quite like um, in terms of texture. It is on the lighter side in terms of texture. I do wish it had a higher APV, but I say that about everything that's 40-43%. Our character here is very light, it's very bright. I think this would be perfect for like a casual spring or summertime sipper. You know, it's clean, it's zesty. I can just imagine someone maybe on a picnic or sitting on the front porch, taking the sunlight, that kind of vibe. So overall, I'm not mad at this stuff. I think it's solid. It's a decent entry level offering. It is much better than the 12. You guys were right. I should listen to you more often. I think if you're looking for an introduction to Tomatin and you want to stick to a budget, the Legacy is the place to start. Otherwise, if you want something a little bit more intense, you could also opt for the cast strength, although that is more expensive. Just make sure you stay away from the 12 year old. Uh, for our Legacy here, I like it. I think my score is going to be 83. Once again, we do have to keep in mind that this is a no age stated budget entry level offering. It's cheap as chips and it does have a pretty nice character. Uh, is it a simple whiskey? Yes. Is it a very interesting and engaging whiskey? Not really. Uh, do we get a strong sense of character or distillate here? Also no. But then again, that's not really Tomatin's thing, is it? But that doesn't mean that it's without charm or that it's not a good casual sipper. I think it is. Uh, you know, I gave it 83. That's not a high score, but it's a warm 83. So while it does have its shortcomings, as far as I'm concerned, they're forgivable. It's decent stuff. Try it if you're interested. So I've been talking throughout this video about how cheap this whiskey is. So in terms of a value proposition, I do think it's a good buy. It's not a great whiskey. It's not mind blowing, but again, very casual, very pleasant. For what I paid, I'm very satisfied. Now, I don't know about other markets, but I know that in my market, this is about as cheap of a price as you're going to get for any single malt whiskey. I mean, they do have stuff like Glenmorangie 10 out there. There's um, Ardmore Legacy. There's some undisclosed single malts on the market, but broadly speaking, they don't get much cheaper than this. And as I said, it's not bad. So grab it if you're inclined. And that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That is always appreciated. And I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Tometan Legacy here? Have you tried the 12-year-old or the cast strength? How would they compare? Finally, down below in the comments, let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for some upcoming videos. Bye, guys. Thank you.